Our scripture comes from Matthew 28, uh, beginning with verse 18. These are the last words that Jesus shared with his disciples. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, hello, Christ Church and all of our friends joining us today. I'm glad that you're with us for online worship. If you're on Facebook or the website, say hello to other friends in the chat. If you have prayer requests or praise reports, send them to us. If you want to follow along with my outline, you can do so on the website or the church app. So, how are you doing today? I know the wind has been blowing and the leaves continue to fall and Thanksgiving is coming. I pray that Thanksgiving Day will be a meaningful and enjoyable time for you. Certainly the practice of lifting up thanks and praise to God for His many blessings is something we Christ followers try to cultivate year-round. It's wonderful that we have this day in our country to focus our thanks and our praise. Amen? Amen. I'm continuing our series, Core Values. We've said that as we journey through life, there are core values that anchor our everyday walk with Jesus and, and strengthen the ministry of our church. I'm convinced that in the midst of whatever life challenges we face, these core values provide a solid foundation upon which we can stand. So far, we've talked about salvation, Scripture, the Holy Spirit, prayer, stewardship, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Another core value at the heart of our Christian practice is missions, outreach. One of the immediate results of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection was that the disciples were compelled to share the good news of what God had done through Jesus Christ. It was quite an amazing story, and they were compelled to share it. Jesus himself had told them, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The word evangel from which we get evangelism means bring good news. At the heart of our mission is to bring the good news about Jesus Christ to the world. We do that in lots of different ways, beginning with our own opportunities to share the story of Jesus with our family, our friends, and acquaintances. Perhaps you will have the opportunity to share your faith this Thanksgiving. I'm praying that God will give me those natural opportunities. Having opportunities to share usually begins with me being intentional to look for them. It's always good to pray and to be intentional in our lives. And of course, that reminds me. That takes me back yet again to something that I learned during that Cinderella season, my senior year, playing high school football. Can you believe that someone could learn so much from one experience? I guess I had a lot to learn. Still do, really. Another thing our new football coach helped us with during that amazing season was preparing us to meet our opponents. On Monday of each week, our coaches would begin to tell us about the upcoming team. They would talk to us about the unique plays that we'd be facing that Friday night. They'd tell us about their strengths on offense and defense. They'd begin to tell us who their best players were and what we could expect from them and what we were going to do to stop them. They wanted us to know what we were getting into. 
They wanted us to know everything we could to be prepared. If you were playing on offense, you knew who your opponent was on their defense. You got a sheet that listed their height, their weight, their name. The same went for defense. And then later in that week, we watched films to see in action what our coaches had been talking to us about. We got to watch those players we'd been learning about. In some cases, it was scary. <laughs> in most cases, it was sobering. But in every case, we were learning to get ready for what we could expect on Friday. So by the time Friday came around, guess what? We were ready. We knew what we were up against. We knew what our plan was going to be on both offense and defense. The only thing left to do was work the plan to execute. And so, seven out of eight times that season, because of our confidence in what we were doing, we came away from the game the victors. Another thing I learned that memorable season was the value of knowing what you're up against and being as prepared as you can. When we talk about missions, outreach, evangelism today, it's important to know what we're up against. The truth is, many people today are a bit uneasy whenever we talk about missions, outreach, evangelism. Why is that? Well, over the years, some of the ways that we've shared our faith through missions and evangelism have created some baggage when people hear those words. For some, missions and evangelism is too pushy. The word evangelism means simply sharing good news. And there's always been a bit of zeal on the part of Christians when it comes to sharing our faith particularly among the 5 to 10% of Christians that one teacher suggests have the spiritual gift of evangelism. About 5 to 10% of us. Have you known those persons? Every church needs them. We can't do without them. But sometimes, in zeal to share, we overstep our bounds. It can happen. We are so eager to share that we come across pushy. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Are you going to heaven? These may not be the best lead-off questions for sharing faith today. I find faith sharing works best today when I've developed a relationship with someone. And in the midst of natural conversation, I simply tell a story of how Jesus has recently made a difference to me. I find that more natural. We don't want to be too zealous or pushy as we share our faith. We can be too zealous in other ways, too. Story is told of a man who went to confession and said, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Last night I kissed seven different women. Well, the priest said, Here's what you're going to do. Take seven lemons and squeeze them into a glass and drink the juice without pausing. The man asked, will, will that cleanse me of my sin, Father? No, replied the priest, but it will wipe that silly grin off your face. Too much zeal can get us into trouble. Another objection that has been raised is this. Missionaries impose their culture. This was once very prominent in Christian mission work. We would set up a base camp that reflected our culture and way of doing things, and then we would move out from there. The assumption we started with was, our culture is best. Today we understand that if we really want to reach someone, be it overseas or right here in our own school or at work, in our neighborhood, in our family. We have to start where people are. We have to learn to appreciate their perspective, 
their life story, their worldview, before we can know how the good news of Christ's gospel can address their particular needs and impact their life for good. We have to enter their world, not impose our own. Another objection to missions and evangelism we face is this. Why Christ versus other faiths? Why do we keep lifting up Christ and the Christian faith when there are other faith expressions throughout the world? That's a good question. I'd say, first, we try to share the gospel story with others because Jesus commanded it. Go and make disciples of all nations. Secondly, we believe that Christ's message and story is unique, and it warrants telling. And yet we respect and appreciate other faith traditions and learn everything we can about them. In fact, an article not long ago in the Tulsa World titled Breaking Bread and Barriers talked about that very thing being done around the dinner table here in Tulsa among Christians, Jews, and Muslims. Yes, there will always be some objections from some quarters when we talk about missions and evangelism, and we have to be aware of that and sensitive to that. And we do have to acknowledge and understand the reality of the world in which we live. So, what do we believe? How should we respond? What compels us to bear witness and to share our faith in the midst of a different and changing world. I want to lift up four brief points from the scriptures. First of all, we believe that God cares for the whole world. Type whole world in the chat. God loves all people. As creator, redeemer, God cares for all of his creation. In those infamous words from John 3.16 that we read, For God so loved the what? The world that He gave His one and only Son. Look at the diversity of creation. Look at the diversity among human beings. Look at the diversity of cultures in our world. We are not all alike. We believe the God who created it all is also deeply interested in it all. Number two, something within us is drawn to God. There is within the human soul a longing, a yearning to know God. We believe that longing represents the, the image of God that is part of our human makeup. The book of Genesis in chapter 1 verse 7 says it this way, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We are created in God's image. And that image causes us to seek after the things of God. St. Augustine wrote, Thou hast created us for thyself, and our heart is not quiet until it rests in thee. For all their diversity, each faith tradition in the world seeks to answer these or address these basic questions. Who is God? Who am, <clears throat> who am I? What does God want me to do? A third Christian belief is this. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the distinct aspect of the Christian faith. God sent His Son. No other faith tradition has that as its story. John 1.14 expresses the miracle of Christ's incarnation in this way. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the One and Only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is what distinguishes Christianity, the claim of God's incarnation in Jesus Christ. For many, their understanding of God just won't allow them to consider this, but it is central to our faith. Why did God send Jesus? Consider 
these three profound reasons. First of all, to show His love. His love. In Christ's life and ministry, we see the kind of love and compassion God has for all people. In Jesus, we see God's love. Post love in the chat. Secondly, I would say this, to pay the price. To pay the price. In Christ's death on the cross, we see how far God was willing to go to win our salvation. Our forgiveness was won at a tremendous cost. Christ on the cross. And finally, I would say, to win eternal life. In Christ's death and resurrection, we have the promise of victory and our own resurrection someday. These simple truths and others make Jesus' message and ministry uniquely compelling. And that's why through the centuries, there have always been people eager to share it. And my fourth point, God uses ordinary people to spread the good news. Post ordinary in the chat. When you look at those earliest disciples and, and examine the lives of people throughout the centuries who've shared the gospel of Christ, you see that God uses all kinds of people from different backgrounds and walks of life to share His message of love and forgiveness and hope. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 sheds some light on it. It reads, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are not perfect. We are simply jars of clay, fragile, easily broken, and yet God uses ordinary people like you and me. So, if our message is true that Jesus is God's Son, that He is God's Messiah, that Jesus lived, died, and rose again, then everything about His life has significance and His words have compelling meaning. So, what should we do? How should we respond? I lift up three responses. First of all, go. As part of our general calling in Christ, each one of us has been commissioned to go out into our world and share Jesus' story. The last word that he shared in Matthew 28, 19 was this, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In that spirit, we obey what Jesus said. We go into all the world simply sharing the story of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We tell the story of how God's grace has impacted us. Secondly, love. Post love in the chat. We are commanded to love others, and we do it because of the example Jesus lived before us. In John 15, 12, he told his disciples, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. We love others because we are so aware of how much Christ loves us. Finally, win. Go, love, win. Ultimately, we hope to win some people to Christ. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 9, 19, Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to what? to win as many as possible. Part of our calling as Christians is to use our freedom, our creativity, and resources to try and help others discover their own freedom in Christ. One of the greatest barriers that prevents people from coming to Christ is fear. We're afraid that if Christ's message is true, then it will impact and perhaps change the way we live. So often, what we opt for is the status quo. Let's just keep things the way they are. 
but how can we help people get past that fear? By continuing to show them that life with Christ is good. It's life-giving. It's helpful. It's practical. It's meaningful. It's even fun. The author C.S. Lewis writes about how he became convinced the gospel was true and that he needed to give his life to Christ. But he was distraught, thinking that it meant the fun part of life was over. Well, after almost begrudgingly putting faith in Christ, he was surprised by the joy, the happiness, the fulfillment, and even the fun that he found as a Christ follower. He titled his autobiography, Surprised by Joy. Post joy in the chat. Many people are afraid or apprehensive about change, let alone life with Christ. But we need to help them see and understand the change that Christ brings is good. It's positive. It's helpful. It's adventuresome. It is fun. So we keep sharing our faith with love and compassion. And we understand that we won't win everyone. But if we continue to seek God's wisdom and keep a servant's posture with Christ's help, we have a great chance of winning some. And that hope, that possibility, is surely worth all of our efforts. Let's pray about that. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Gracious Lord, we thank you for helping us understand the value of missions, outreach, evangelism in our world. Though the task is never easy and each generation has its challenges, we also have our own opportunities to share the good news of your love with the whole world. The message about Jesus is simple and yet profound. The gospel addresses the deepest longings of the human heart. Help us to share that message with humility, love, compassion, and respect for others. Continue to give us wisdom, power, and grace to shine your light in our families, among our friends, and even to the rest of our world. It's in Jesus' name we've prayed. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hey, if you want to visit with me about the message, I'd love to hear from you. Perhaps you want to visit more about missions, outreach, sharing your faith. Let's talk. Maybe you'd say, hey, what I really need is Christ. I need the forgiveness that Jesus can give. I want to be surprised by joy. If that's you, simply pray this prayer. Jesus, I need your saving grace. I want your joy. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe you died for me. And right now, I trust you as my Savior and I receive your Holy Spirit in my life. If you prayed that prayer, though it's simple, it's profound. I would say this, welcome. Welcome into God's family. Hallelujah. Tell somebody about it. I'd love to hear from you as well. Hey, if you have prayer requests or praise reports, send them to us. We want to hear from you. Use the app, the website. And of course, thank you for your generosity. You know, giving is a tangible way that we do thank God for His goodness. So go online, make a gift, and thank you for helping us to reach others with this wonderful love and grace. Of Jesus Christ. Be sure to take advantage of our discipleship opportunities. Find all the information you need on our website, cumctulsa.com. Remember this, God's love is what compels us to share the good news about Jesus. For now, who do you know that needs to hear about this love and this grace and this forgiveness in Jesus Christ?